friends and family, welcome to another uncomfortable conversation with a mad woman. In this conversation, we're going to ask ourselves the question, is it time for a divorce? If you're interested, go ahead, grab a snack, grab a drink, and let's talk. So if you've been married for a while, <laughs> inevitably, there comes a time when you ask yourself that question. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, I told you this is a free space. It's, to me, it's a safe space. I share my thoughts, my feelings and everything. I hope you do the same. But it's important to have that discussion. I think a lot of times when people find themselves in certain situations in marriages, they think they're alone. They think they are the only people going through it because everybody's like, hee, 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 ka, 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 ha, 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 in their marriages. And so they think, hmm, everybody's happy in their marriage except me. No, you're not alone. I've told you guys, marriage is, a, marriage is a journey, right? It is not a destination. And in a journey, when you're driving somewhere, you go hills and valleys. Sometimes it's all straight plain and then hills and valleys. You know what I mean? That is what's normal. So inevitably, there'll come a rough patch or two or three <laughs> or 12 <laughs> where you have to ask yourself, is it time to just move on? Now, from my perspective, when that time comes, there are certain questions you have to ask yourself. If you have children together, what's going to happen with the children? You have to think about that. That's number one. Number two, you have property together. I don't know how long you've been married. Do you, there are certain laws in place that you have to abide by. If you've been married for a certain number of years, regardless of what you came in with or didn't come in with, everything is split down the middle. For some people, that's a yay. For some people, that's like, eh, what? <laughs> and then number three, did you try everything you possibly could to make it work before calling it quits? So let's go through this one at a time. Let's start with the children. If you have children together, one of the things that you have to think about is if you get a divorce mm -hmm. and there is no um, infidelity involved or something dire or abuse or whatever it is, what happens is that they the courts will make the children share equal amount of time with each spouse if you get a divorce, which means if the children are in a school, a certain school, you're all going to have to live in the same neighborhood so the children's lives are not disrupted and they continue to go to the same school because they can't come to your place and go to one school and then when they come to the, the spouse's place, go to a different school. That just doesn't happen. If you don't have children, that is not complicated then when it comes to that part. But you do have to think about whether there is infidelity, who's going to be paying who alimony, who makes more money than who. Because people usually assume that the, the man is going to have to be paying alimony to the woman. It doesn't always go that way. <laughs> it doesn't. So you have to do your research before you come to the point to say, yeah, it's time for a divorce. Don't, don't let it come out of your mouth until you've done your research. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Don't, don't even let it in. <laughs> Keep it in. <laughs> and do your research and know what you're in for before you do that. Also remember that if you do decide, especially when there are children involved, and you start to leave, lead different lives where the woman has their own boyfriend now and the man, the husband has their own girlfriend now, the children now have to deal with those situations. I have had several stepmothers and one stepfather. Let me tell you, it wreaks havoc on a child. I can't tell you enough. So you have to think about, is it worth your child going through that for your emotional comfort or not? Again, if it's an abusive situation, that's a whole different ballgame. Here in the United States, or at least in, in the area that I am in, 
the the community is zoned for certain schools so you can't you don't unless you're going to private school you don't just take your child to any public school you feel like usually it is this community the children go to these um, elementary middle school and and high school that kind of thing so you have to think about that um, when it comes to the property who gets what are you gonna sell everything and then divide up the money and then everybody figures out what they're gonna do where they're gonna stay you know um, it's easier said than done I can tell you this there are certain things that folks don't think about if there's cheaterization involved in the determination of this divorce whoever is saying that cheaterization happened has to prove it is not just text me messages i can tell you that it's not just emails i can tell you that they want pictures so you would have had to have a private investigator or something pay them to actually get concrete evidence that unequivocally shows cheaterization be one of the things they're going to ask you if you get a lawyer or or whatever it is is what have you tried to do in order to reconcile your differences be ready to answer that i would always say there's no situation that i think is unresolvable if both parties are committed but both parties have to be committed if only one person wants the marriage to work it ain't gonna happen <laughs> you're not so you both have to be committed to make it work truly truly committed to put in the hard work which means then you'd be seeking counseling therapy whatever is needed remember each of you came into the marriage with baggage i, I keep saying this you came into the marriage with baggage baggage means you have certain expectations because you saw certain things you know growing up and you've experienced certain things in your life so you have a certain perception of what marriage should be and once you're in it sometimes you realize it ain't what you thought it was gonna be from my perspective my mother and father i said it in the pre in previous videos i was born into the divorce they were already apart when I was born. So I never knew them together. So <laughs> I've never known my two parents living under the same roof taking care of me. But what that did to me could have been so detrimental to my life, to my future, if it wasn't for God. God orchestrated certain people to be in my life and, you know, the people that I lived with and the things that I learned from them and a grandmother who was rooted in the word and covered me in prayer. And an auntie, several aunties actually, who loved on me and tried to fill the void that I felt within my soul. If I hadn't had those situations and those people, <laughs> drug addict prostitute baby mama i'm just saying and nobody would have faulted me for it nobody because i watched oprah and i watched jerry springer and i know these things but what i'm saying in this is that so when you have children right and you're considering these things and you're going through your therapy, hopefully, and all of that, you have to consider the effect on the children. One of the reasons why I didn't want to ha have children when I was married, because I knew I'd have to die to myself when children are involved. It's not about me anymore when children are involved. It's not about me. It's not about what I feel like. It's not what I want. Uh -uh. And... I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to die to myself. I didn't want to be in that position where that self-sacrifice <laughs> was like that. Uh -uh. The reason why was because I didn't want my children to go through what I went through. I would die first. 
that's just that was just me i did not want to my children to go through that ever no child should have to go through the the repercussions of the mistakes of a parent it's abominable to me that's why i'm telling you if you choose to get married before you choose to get married think about it be very very careful in the decisions that you make because eventually possibly another life will come into that situation and everything you do will affect that life and you will be responsible to answer to god for that life and and what you did to contribute positively or negatively to that life so you have to be very very cognizant if you are thinking about is it time for a divorce on the other hand a child watching a parent suffer through a marriage because of them i can't i can't tell you i don't know i don't know it's almost like a lose-lose situation so listen before you decide whether it's time for a divorce please consider all these things i have said in my previous video and i'll say it again if it is an abuse situation listen get the hell out that's all i gotta say about that and again there are warning signs abuse doesn't suddenly happen it's usually incremental usually and it grows and it grows and it grows and it culminates in something that we call abuse so so when you're talking about a divorce consider these three things think very carefully about them the grass is not going on the other side i can tell you that because i have seen children in a divorced marriage situation that are struggling so much and i've seen children living in a marriage where it's done and they are going through so much so i don't know i don't know you have to get your situation and think for yourself and do what is best for you and your child your children if you have children uh, you really really have to think through it it should not be an emotional decision that's one thing i have to leave you with it can't be emotional it has to be factual and very logical very very logical write your pros and your cons being divorced and being married pros and cons and weigh them and if you can find books to read and do some research and everything do it nobody comes out winning in a divorce nobody does and in a miserable marriage it's the same nobody wins so once you're married and if you haven't sought counseling or therapy do that before you decide to get divorced again outside of abusive relationships you have to make sure that you you do everything so that when you decide to throw in the towel you're not looking back because you know you've done everything that you can okay hey have you subscribed click on the button and subscribe ah why why are you doing me like that just subscribe hmm. and then hit that notification bell so that you know you'll you'll know when i post the next the next discussions make sure to comment below because i want to know your thoughts on this um i know people are very happily people who are very very happily divorced out there and i know people who are like um i shouldn't have so let me know what your thoughts are and remember in order to have a, a good marriage a happy marriage a content marriage a successful marriage a thriving marriage <laughs> Be kind to yourself and your spouse and be respectful to yourself and to your spouse. Okay. If you have to say, if you want to send me any emails, you want to talk about certain things you can't put in the comments below. My email is there. You can send me a direct message in Instagram. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. So you have all the links over there. So you can contact me in any of those ways. Okay. Until next time, have a blessed week.